Hey y'all, welcome to the Charles Norman Show. It's Refresh Monday, y'all. Let's have a great week this week. I know one thing we're going to have an amazing show today. We have to break down the conference championship games from this weekend. The first game of the weekend was fantastic. I'm going to say it was one of my favorite games I've ever saw. The AFC Championship was it. I wasn't really interested in it. Since the Super Bowl is next week, we won't really go into depth about that game itself today or on Friday. We have hot topics today. It's been a long time since we've had hot topics, but this will be fun. Today's inspiration is all about self-confidence. We'll be using the Miss Jean Kilburn's video title, Killing Us Softly 4. This one is going to be good. You won't want to miss it. It's time to start the show. Here we go. Here we go. So, I went 2 and on my picks this week. I was perfect. The thing that makes me happy about the Seahawks and the Patriots getting to the Super Bowl is the fact that I predicted this about 10 shows ago on episode 35. Don't believe me? Just watch. My initial Super Bowl picks go like this. I'm looking at, at first, I got two different games. I got Patriots versus Seahawks or Patriots versus Packers. More likely, Patriots versus Seahawks. Not bragging on anything, but I know my football. How about those Seahawks, y'all? Look. I believe that the Seahawks are the best team in the NFL. They were down and out about 60 trillion times in this game, but they never gave up. That speaks volumes. My favorite part of the game is when Russell Wilson threw his last interception. He showed me that he's a true leader after what he did on the sideline. He went to the sideline and put his jacket over his head like this for about two seconds. It was like he was giving up. Then he quickly got himself together, threw the jacket off, and he got up and started encouraging his teammates. That was the best thing I've seen in football in a long time. There were five minutes and 42 seconds left in this game. At this point, when he threw that pick, he could have easily given up, but he didn't. He has the heart of a champion. He has the fight of a champion. He cried after the game, and when he spoke, he didn't make the game about him. He made it about God and the unbelievable fight of his teammates. I have never been happier for one player than I have ever than I am for um, what's his name? Russell Wilson. The Seahawks were down 97 with 3 minutes and 52 seconds left to go in the game and they kept on fighting. On Saturday I said the Packers had to stick to their game plan and they win. In the second half I don't think they stuck to their game plan. They didn't stick to what was working. The Packers were moving the ball really fast with that up-tempo style offense. In the second half they played a slow game and I think that helped the Seahawks ultimately win the game. Never take your foot off of that gas pedal, ever. You have to keep going. I remember before the season on Facebook, I said the special teams won the championship and people called me crazy. Well, the special teams won the Seahawks this championship yesterday. Starting off with the fake field goal that changed the momentum of the game, but I think the fake caught everybody off guard. It was the call of the whole entire playoff. John Lyon, the punter, threw a pass with his right hand while on the run to tackle Gary Gilliam. That's hard to do. Then the onside kick by Stephen Hoskins that Seattle recovered basically sealed the deal. Poor Brandon Bowski. This guy caught two passes all year long. Why was he even on the hands team? He was supposed to block, but the ball came right to him, so he wanted to catch it. He tried to be a hero, and he ended up being a zero. Great job, Seahawks. Not going to spend that much time on the AFC championship. This game between the Colts. This game sucked and so did the coast, as I expected. Andrew Luck is over here. Hold your horses, everyone. He's not a Hall of Famer yet. 45-7 to in the conference championship game means that the coach should not have been there. The coach got lucky throughout the playoffs so far. Just look back. And the luck ran out yesterday. First, the Bengals are missing a lot of their key players. And then last week, old man Peyton was injured. The Patriots were healthy, and they kicked the coach's ass. The Patriots dominated. I said after... That Monday night football game against the Chiefs, that they will be okay. And they were. Congratulations, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. They're back in the big game. This game is going to be huge for Tom Brady's legacy. Will he finish 3 3 in the Super Bowl or 4 2? 3 3 in the Super Bowl will definitely take away from his legacy. We will see. We have two weeks to talk about this. Moving on to hot topics. This is not really a hot topic, but it makes me happy, and it is news. The NCAA has restored all 112 of Joe Paterno's wins. This moves Joe Pye 
back to the title and what this gives him the title most winning against coaching in Mr. Foreman I have returned y'all did y'all watch the Whitney Houston movie on Saturday night I did I thought Angela Bassett did a really good job with this movie the casting was amazing you must give Miss Deborah Cox Deborah Cox some major props for voicing Whitney Houston songs y'all got the cost of play Whitney Houston perfect I thought y'all are yeah, Yala. Yaya looks more like Angela Bassett than she did look like Whitney Houston though. Angela Bassett did the best with what she was given. But people don't understand that this story is not Whitney's full life biography. It was a story of her love with her husband Bobby Brown. Her then husband Bobby Brown. I enjoyed it. Whitney Houston's family did not want this movie done either. Her sister in law, Pat Houston, had this to say about this movie, which I thought was wrong. I say this to all Whitney's fans, family. And friends, if you watch this movie, watch it on that Lifetime is notorious for making bad biopics of deceased, deceased celebrities. Embrace yourselves for the worst. You should not be surprised that someone decided to do a made-for-TV biopic. And I might add, without the family's blessing, and despite her mother's request not to do this movie, it happens every day. But misrepresenting the term friendship to advance an agenda is not only disrespectful and dishonest, but a slap in the face to her true and loyal fans. You should expect people will always rise to the occasion for prominence and profit, not love, respect, or honor. I question the morality of the making of this because of the lack of experience of knowing Whitney's life. Never will Whitney allow her story to be told by an inexperienced team. And how naive of anyone to think otherwise unless you're caught up in illusions of grandeur that you can just do anything and people will accept it. This made for movie TV. This made for TV movie certainly not a trailer of Whitney's life story. It's funny that I think it's funny that Pat is talking about respect and people making money off of Whitney when she's the one who had the family do a reality TV show not too long after her sister-in-law passed away. It seems to me that she was the one who cashed in on Whitney. If you have not seen Selma yet, go see it. That was a very, very good movie. I loved it. I feel like the stars from the movie should have been nominated for more Os for Oscars, but they didn't get the nominations. I won't let that. An award determined if the movie was good or not. It's a goodie. Take my word for it. It was nominated for Best Picture, but it's probably not going to win because of another great movie that came out. American Sniper. That was a very, very good movie also. You should go see it if you can. Moving on to Inspiration. Okay, this inspiration is very risky, but I'm going to do it anyway. First, let me tell y'all what inspired me to do this inspiration. I have three little sisters and one young girl, first cousin, who is like a little sister to me. And I want them all to know from a young age that they are phenomenal just the way they are. Not just for them, but for every uh, everybody else. Watch this video of Jean Kilborn from her movie, Killing Us Softly For. I want y'all to think about this video. Show it to your girls. Take it in for yourselves. We are all so obsessed with looking like these celebrities. When it comes down to it, we can't. Photoshop can't help us in real life. When they walk off the set of their photo shoots, they look ordinary just like everybody else. Because they are ordinary. I think being beautiful gets mistaken with being popular. The popular look is not necessarily the beautiful look. Look in the mirror at yourself and notice how beautiful you are. Claim your natural beauty. You don't have to look like Hollywood's portrayal of beauty in order to be beautiful. If what Hollywood's portrayal of beauty is what beautiful is, then we must change the definition of beauty to fake because that's what Hollywood's portrayal of it is, fake. Computers make those women beautiful. You don't have to have high cheekbones or light skin to be beautiful. Beauty comes in all shapes, sizes, and colors. You don't have to have long, silky, straight hair. Don't be obsessed with being something that's fake, something that you're not. The most beautiful people in the world are the people, well, I believe, the most beautiful people in the world are the people who are completely comfortable and confident with themselves. I believe their confidence is the most beautiful characteristic of them all. You have to realize that it's okay to be you. 
know that you are beautiful. My favorite part of this video is when she says that Cindy Crawford said, I wish I looked like Cindy Crawford. She's letting everybody know right there that she doesn't look like her Photoshop pictures, which means they're fake. By no means am I taking anything away from the women who are used to promote Hollywood's view on beauty, but everyone has to realize that this is what the truth is. It's not real. Our weekly assignment this week is to be comfortable and confident with being who you are. You are beautiful. Remember that beauty is not only on the outside, but it's also what's on the inside. Again, you are beautiful and you are phenomenal. And to end our inspiration, we'll hear a special poet recite a very special poem. Many people wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. When I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palms of my hands, the need for my care, because I'm a woman, phenomenally. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching the show today on this very special day. Happy Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day to everyone. I hope everyone understands the greatness that this man stood for. Dr. King was a true warrior. The things he did to help give all people equal rights were simply amazing. He was one of a kind. Dr. King is the true meaning of leadership. I hope that I can only be as great as at what I do as he was and what he did. And my favorite Dr. King quote is, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great of a burden to bear. Even with all the hate thrown towards him, he always showed love. With that being said, I love each and every one of y'all. See you later, everybody.